So everybody's worried about the sequester uh, kicking in, and there's going to be massive cuts uh, equally across the board to all social programs, plus the defense department, which is, is like the only way they're ever going to cut defense, right, is if it happens in a horrible way. So uh, uh, Leon Panetta went on uh, Press the Meet with David Gregory, and here he had to say this about it. He's upset. Let me tell you, if sequester happens, it is going to badly damage the readiness of the United States of America. We have the most powerful military force uh, on the face of the earth right now. Yes, yeah, so when he talks about readiness, it's going to badly damage the readiness. He means, uh, by readiness, he means it's going to the ability to spend trillions of dollars on shit they won't even tell him what it's for. That's what he means. It's not the greatest joke in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's, it was solid. It was solid. It seemed, it seemed we were headed for a more serious point. I think he caught us all off guard. <laughs> that was the problem. Well, he's like, Okay, so he, uh, but let's remember, so he's all upset that they might cut defense spending. How much? Because it, every dollar, by the way, he can't do without any, can't lose any dollar. So he, I'm going to remind you, we played this on this show before, Ben. Here's Leanne Panetta talking to Scott Pelley from 60 Minutes. And Scott Pelley asked him, how many wars are we in currently? In how many countries are we currently engaged in a shooting war? It's a good question. <laughs> you know, it's, you uh, have to stop and count. <laughs> stop. I'll have to stop and think about that because... Because, you know, I've been desensitized to the horrors of war. <laughs> and I giggle about it. <laughs> so here's a guy who can't even tell you how many... Here's the head of the Pentagon, can't even tell us how many countries were involved in a shooting war, but he knows for goddamn sure we can't cut any money for the stuff that he doesn't even know where it's going, okay? So he goes out. He's very upset about it. Uh, it is important in terms of providing stability and peace in the world. If sequester goes into effect and we have to do the kind of cuts that will go right at readiness, right at maintenance, right at training, we are going to weaken the United States and make it much more difficult for us to respond to the crises in the world. Yes, we need to be able to fight in two wars at the same time with zero chance of winning. We need all the money. Do you have, have you seen how these soldiers eat? <laughs> By the way, it's not two wars at one time. It's, I don't know, three, four. Who knows? I can't, I can't even keep going. It's, so <laughs> it's so funny. Wars are funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's hard to keep it in. Yes. Okay, so um, he goes out. He's, even, he's more upset. He's got more to say. It, <clears throat> but let me just give you, can I give you a piece of, just a little piece of information? Uh, when you try, tried to track down how many military bases, bases and installations America has around the globe, and uh, you can't find that out. Nobody knows. People have tried to find this out. Even the Pentagon doesn't know. Uh, they, yeah, because the answer is not like 13. It's not 13. Right, yeah. It's yeah. somewhere between 900 or 1,000 or 1,100. It's not, nobody can tell, but the guy, one guy who did do a study said it's undeniable that the U.S. maintains an empire of bases so large and shadowy that no one, not even the Pentagon, really knows its full size and scope. An honest count of U.S. bases abroad, a true and full comprehensive list, is impossible. That's so, a staggering piece of information. But if you cut this vague number that no one knows, then all of a sudden, they're going to be uh, Russians in uh, Wisconsin. So now he decides to scare the shit out of everyone. Yeah. But I have to tell you, it is irresponsible for it to happen. I mean, why, why in God's name would members of Congress elected by the American people take a step that would badly damage our national defense, but more importantly, undermine the support for our men and women in uniform. Why would you do that? General Dempsey, explain. Um, maybe because you can't name how many wars we're currently fighting in around the world. Maybe because you can't tell us. Maybe because we don't need to spend that amount of money. Maybe that would be why. I, and and, and, and the, by the way, at the end of it there, I mean, that, was, that might as well have been Leon Panetta, George Bush's yes. Secretary of Defense. Like, all of a sudden, they go right to the, and why the, would they do it to... The troops. The, right, undermine the troops. You're, not, you're putting the troops in harm's way. It was all he could do not to say, which was Bush's re-election campaign, look, you can elect John Kerry. That's fine, but there's some chance your children will die. But if, if, that's, <laughs> yes. but if, you're, yes. if you're comfortable with that, then you go ahead and vote for him. And I like, he's like, and I can't be any more specific about how these spending cuts will affect our readiness because, uh, you know, I'm full of shit. That's why. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you know this. I'm full of shit. I don't know. I'm not really lying. I don't know. Yeah, he doesn't I even. Don't, I don't know. I well, don't know. You know, it's like, you want to cut money from the Pentagon? What do you want our men and women to be fighting with sticks and stones? <laughs> That's right, yeah. We're going to go back to muskets. Uh, he feels so strongly about this, Ben. He actually, I don't know if you noticed, he even stopped giggling. 
<laughs> he stopped giggling about wars. All of a sudden, they're going to cut his money. So here's uh, the new joint, joint Chiefs of Staff, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Martin Dempsey, hard to believe a guy named Martin Dempsey isn't British, but he's apparently the chairman of the Joint Chiefs. And so here he goes, and, and, and uh, David Gregory asks him, so he keeps trying. Can you tell us what is going to happen if, we, if they cut? What will happen? Tell us so I, something I can grab onto. Tell me one thing that will happen. One bad thing that right. will happen. Right. Tell me one bad thing. But explain specifically, sequester, are we less safe? We will become less safe. How? I'll tell you how. We, first of all, it's not just sequester. That's the piece of that's, that's been missing in the discussion. We're also operating under a continuing resolution. The accumulative, the, the combined effects of sequester and, and, uh, and the continuing resolution creates a, a magnitude of cut in the last half of the year. We have to absorb $52 billion when you count the effects of both sequestration and, uh, and uh, continuing resolution in the last half of the year. When some of that money is already committed and the only place you can go and get it under that circumstance is readiness. It's operations, it's maintenance, and it's training. Yes, yes. First of all, <laughs> you know, I was sleeping through half. This is so important that, well, first of all, there's an operational readiness on our property. He can't tell you what, are you gonna tell I'm gonna me? Give, I'm gonna give you some specifics, and then I'm gonna talk for the next 35 seconds about the continuing resolution. The continuing resolution, <laughs> and all the money at the end of the year is for ready. Yeah, see, because that 52 billion that they're gonna have to absorb in cuts comes at the end of the year and that's going to affect their uh, readiness operations maintenance and of course the big Christmas party <laughs> <laughs> that's a Christmas party at all 97 of those bases or 107 or 100 yes. I'm sorry 1100 yes. or 940 mm -hmm. it's a lot of Christmas parties. a lot of Christmas parties at the yeah. bases we can't count and yeah. you know it got cuts into readiness Ben and they have women fighting now and you know how long it takes them to get ready <laughs>